This is the all-new fourth-generation 2022 Mitsubishi Outlander in its GT trim level. The Outlander is now built on a shared platform with the Nissan Rogue and some other vehicles like the Infiniti QX50 and the European Renault Kajar. Starting from the exterior, the Outlander definitely has a design language that stands out, especially at the front. The headlights are the thick lenses on the side, while the thin ones on top are actually the daytime driving lights. They say it looks like a shield. I'm not sure what it is, but what I can tell you is that some people love it and some people totally despise it. I really don't mind it, but I think it looks much better from the side and rear with its 20 inch wheels, the intense lines, and those rear taillights, they're pretty sexy. I think from behind, it kind of looks like a BMW. Where it looks absolutely stunning though, especially for the class, is right here, inside. This GT trim level is $41,678, and it's the second best trim level, right behind the GT Premium, which gets a two-tone interior and even better leather. However, even this one is nice AF. Look at this white quilted leather, it looks so fancy. Just like Mazda has done recently, Mitsubishi now seems to be playing the luxury cart as hard as they can, and let me tell you, it's working for me. The interior doesn't only look good, it's also very well made. The materials selected are mostly high grade, it's quiet, and it's functional. And at night, they even did some ambient lighting without overdoing it. The front windows even have laminated glass. Check this out. The seats are very comfortable, they support the body really well, and actually, they also look really nice. And here's the trick the Outlander has. It has a third row, as standard. So this thing is a seven-seater. The super all-wheel control, all-wheel drive system is also standard here in Canada. In the US, you can get a front-wheel drive model, but we'll get to that in a bit. The rear seats slide, recline, and fold individually. They are also heated and have pretty good legroom and very good headroom. The third row is pretty tight, and I would consider it only as an emergency kind of thing or good for small kids. However, if you slide the middle row a bit forward, you can create some legroom, which is nice. Nevertheless, it's great to have, and when it's up, the trunk is still a very usable 332 liters. Fold it down, and you get an impressive 950 liter trunk, and there's space under the floor to store the tonneau cover and the rear headrest. Technology over here is pretty good too. You have all the latest and greatest driving assistance stuff, so you have blind spot monitors, collision detection, mitigation, whatever, lane keep assist, adaptive cruise, everything you really need. It all works very well. I just wish you could separate between them because it's like a master on off switch or a really tedious inside the menu kind of enable disable. A big bonus is wireless CarPlay and a wireless charger. And wait for it, a fully digital instrument cluster that's actually impressive. It's customizable and very sharp and I really like it. The main screen for the infotainment is also easy to use, it's nice to look at, and even the backup camera is very high definition. You also get a very good Bose sound system. And honestly, once you start pumping those beats, it really completes the very upmarket feel that this Outlander is bringing. Also, see this tow hook in the back? You can tow up to 2,000 pounds, which is a very useful number. The super all-wheel drive control all-wheel drive system comes with different driving modes. You get eco, normal, tarmac, which is basically like sport. You have gravel, snow, and mud. Of course, you also get hill descent control for when your life starts going downhill. No, not really. With yaw control and torque vectoring, the all-wheel drive system on the Outlander is pretty good and it can engage the rear axle very quickly when needed. Most importantly though, under the hood you get a 2.5 liter naturally aspirated four-cylinder engine which is also shared with a Nissan Rogue. It makes 181 horsepower and 181 pound-feet of torque and it is mated to a CVT transmission. Zero to 100 kilometers an hour comes in 10.6 seconds. Performance is not its strongest point but really, can you say it's bad? Mm, yes. The funny thing is that the Outlander isn't really the heaviest SUV out there. It weighs just over 1.7 tons, which is not that bad. So honestly, the drivetrain is very efficient, but in terms of performance and excitement, not really. 
I mean, you're never going to hold up traffic. It's not that slow. But if you have any kind of ambition of driving sporty, well, this is not for you. The benefit, of course, is fuel economy. Our combined average has been really steady at 8.6 liters per 100 kilometers, so at least it's really affordable to run. The poor CVT transmission does everything it can to optimize the drive, but when you really hammer it, it responds quickly, but then it produces the annoying steady me scooter-like soundtrack. The engine gets quite loud when you really hammer it, so it's not something that you're gonna like doing a lot, you can also use the paddle shifters and then simulate eight gears. When you're not pushing it, it sounds quite okay. I mean, it almost seems like it's like shifting pretty quickly. But then when you're actually giving it and you're using the paddle shifters, it again, it feels like it slips a lot. So not the best. Handling is not a highlight either, but it is perfectly safe and extremely boring. The steering is okay, I've seen worse in the class, but it's far from sporty. The brake pedal works well, and so do the brakes themselves. From 100 kilometers an hour, it came to a complete stop in 40 meters, which is really good. Around corners, it really won't excite much, especially because it doesn't have any power to like tackle a corner, you know, full force. It does have really good anti-roll bars, like it doesn't really lean, so it feels like it takes corners you know, relatively well, but then again, without power, you can't drive it hard. So does it matter? No. Is it safe? Absolutely. But is it exciting? Just about the same levels as a colonoscopy. Not at all. However, that's not really a bad thing. I mean, not all SUVs need to be sporty and quick. I mean, we do need the comfortable ones. And let me tell you, this is a very comfortable one. Over bumps, the suspension has been really well tuned. It handles potholes, everything with adequate finesse. It's very quiet, so there's no soundtrack coming from like bumpy roads. I have to say, with a laminated glass, it's very quiet, comfortable. It's a very good long distance commuter. This car, when you, especially with for babies, if you want a, a car that's really smooth, especially because it has the CVT and it doesn't shift gears, it's really good. If you have a baby and you want like the ultra smooth um, vehicle to transport your little one, this could actually be an excellent choice. So to wrap this one up, the new Outlander is an over-designed, comfortable and luxurious SUV for the family. It is practical and functional, and despite having Nissan parts, it still comes with a 10-year powertrain warranty. Overall score is 7 out of 10. The value is exceptional, but I am more excited for the PHEV version that's coming next year than this one. So that's pretty much it for the 2022 Outlander. If you like this video, please remember to subscribe, share it with your friends. Most importantly, till next time, be well. Bye-bye.